Okay, so welcome to College Algebra. Any questions before we begin? Okay, so last time we were talking about solving equations, and we're still talking about solving equations. Um, what specifically did we do last time? We were solving, oh yeah, we were solving ra uh, equations involving fractional exponents. Okay, <clears throat> so now we're still solving equations, but now we need to solve another kind. And I want to remind you about the truth preserving truth preserving operations on <coughs> equations. So that is to say things that you can do to an equation that will not modify its truth value. Okay, so one thing you can do is you can add or subtract the same real uh, to both sides. So that's always legitimate. So by the way, what does truth preserving mean? If it's positive, it would stay positive. That'd be sign preserving. Yes? Yeah. So it's not just that. It's not ju so what you're saying is that is that if the if the equation was true, then after adding the same thing to both sides, the result is still true. But it it's also it's false. false. If the equation was false to begin with, it will still be false when you end. So that's what it means to preserve the truth. True in the beginning, true in the end. False in the beginning, false in the end. Okay, so what else can you do to equations? <coughs> okay, you can multiply or divide <coughs> the same. Now I'm going to leave myself a blank. Thank you. Good. Both sides. And so I left myself a blank for the adjective non zero. <coughs> non zero so you can multiply both sides by five that's fine you can divide both sides by five that's fine you can multiply both sides by negative five <laughs> that's fine okay the only thing that you can't do is you can't multiply both sides by zero or and you cannot divide both sides by zero either okay because that will modify the truth <coughs> so here's a separate proposition and this is squaring both si about squaring both sides. So doing this operation is important. It's an important technique that we'll have to use, but it's not truth preserving. So, for example, here's an equation, 4 equal to 4, and if we square both sides, so first off, is this equation true? Yes. It's true. If we square both sides, what is the new left-hand side? What is the new right-hand side? Okay. So, is this equation true? It is. <clears throat> okay, so then th what, what that's saying is that here's an example of where squaring both sides and the, tr and the truth was preserved. Okay, how about this equation? Is this equation true? Yes. Let's square both sides. 
What's the new left hand side? Nine. What's the new right hand side? Nine. Nine. So here's another instance in which squaring both sides preserve the truth. So who can tell me the punchline? Who can tell me an example where the, the truth is not preserved? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That's, <laughs> that's the Pythagorean formula. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I'm not sure I follow. In that case, A plus B is not equal C. But A squared plus B squared equals Ah, but now I disagree on the on the basis that a plus b all squared is a squared oh. plus b squared plus 2ab. Fair enough. So, what could go wrong here? It's something as simple as what I have, it, it is as simple looking as one of these. So we started with 4 is 4, that's true. Square both sides, 16 is 16, that's true. We start with negative 3 is negative 3, that's true. Square both sides, 9 is 9, that is true. How can we mess this up? If it's an equation, it Not that. So how about this? How about this one? <clears throat> so is this an equation? Yes. It's yes. Not true. It's false. Uh, it's false. Let's square both sides. What's the new left hand side? What's the new right hand side? Uh oh. <laughs> so does everyone everyone observe? We started with an equation which was false. We we performed the squaring both sides operation, and we, we resulted with the new equation that evaluates true. So this one, all right? This is good. Good. Not good. Okay, so does everyone see? Okay. Squ squaring both sides does not necessarily preserve the truth. Okay. Nevertheless, it's going to be important. So, now that I've prepared you for that, <coughs> uh, let's solve an equation. So we're going to solve. We're going to solve. <coughs> Square root 15 minus 2x equal to x. We want to solve this. So now, before we do anything at all, I'd just like to point out that part of this exercise will involve getting x by itself. Presently, there are x's in the radical. How will we get the x's out? Squaring. That's the only way to get it out, is by squaring. Okay, but before we do that, the very first thing that you do when you are going to solve an equation is consider what? The natural domain. So the right-hand side has no problems. It's just an x. You can plug anything into that that you want, right? Seven would be fine. So can you plug, what about the left-hand side? What must be true? Okay, so the left-hand side, right, the thing that we're going to put into the radical, right, so then the phrase thing that we put into the thing is too clumsy, so there's a, there's a math phrase for thing that you put into the thing. What is that? Argument, argument right? <laughs> the argument to the radical, okay, needs to be non-negative. So the natural domain is that 15 minus 2x must be greater or equal to zero. That's what we need to be true. And we could solve and obtain 15 greater or equal to 2x, moving that to the other side. And then now what? Divide by two. So 7.5, seven and a half, is greater or equal to x. And how would you write this in interval notation? Okay, so what about that? Is that right? So, for example, 10 is in here. 
Okay. So not this one. This one. Okay, so that means that at, when we get when we near the end of the problem, we'll have a we'll have a list of candidate solutions. If one of them is four, then okay, that's reasonable. But if one of them is fourteen, no, that's not going to work. It has to be excluded. Okay, because fourteen is not in here. So now let's perform the sequence of operations. So here we are. At 15 minus 2x inside of the radical is equal to x. So what do we need to do? Square, Square both sides. <clears throat> now, it's necessary to do this because we've got to get those x's out of the radical. But we just carefully considered and showed that it's not truth preserving. So I'm going to mark this, this line so that when I'm looking back through my solution, I know uh, that's where I did something that was questionable. I may have modified the truth when I did that. OK. <clears throat> so when you square both sides, what's the new left-hand side? Very good. And the new right-hand side is x squared. Okay, now what? Right, so I'll put, I'll, how about I put everything on the same side? So zero is x squared plus 2x minus 15. And so what kind of thing is this? A quadratic equation, right? Lovely. We could use the quadratic formula, but before you break out the bazooka, you ought to just have a look and see, could I do this the easy way? So can you? Yeah. Yeah. So how does it factor? X plus five, X minus three. Very good. Okay, therefore, what are the solutions to this equation? Now, what I want you to observe is that we started here, where, we're, where we were instructed to start. And then we performed a sequence of operations and arrived here, saying that, OK, negative 5 and 3. But those, that sequence of operations was not, in a sense, legitimate. It's possible, part of what occurred may, have, may be illegitimate, because we squared both sides. So, Negative 5 and 3 definitely solve this equation. They definitely solve this one, no doubt. But it is still an open question whether or not they solve this one. Okay. So <clears throat> now we need to perform our checks. The first check is the natural domain. So the candidates are negative 5 and 3. Are they in the natural domain? Yes. They both are. Okay, but if one of the candidates had been like 40, we'd have to say, nah, 40's out. Okay, so now we're going to check the original equation. Uh, so let's check them both. So x is negative 5. We're going to check that one. So what do I mean by check? Yeah, plug it in and see what happens. <coughs> okay. So 15 minus 2 times negative 5 equal to negative 5. Okay. In the radical, Negative 2 times negative 5 is negative, or, sorry, 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. 15 minus negative 10 is 15 plus 10. So under the radical is 25. What is the square root of 25? 5. No. 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 
everything that comes out of the square root has to be non-negative. So you can call it absolute value of 5 if you want, but what's the absolute value of 5? Five? 5. 5. The square root of 25 is 5. There is no other. Okay. Now I agree entirely that negative 5 squared is 25. I agree with that. But negative 5 is not the square root of 25. 5 is. What's the square root of 36? 6. 6. Not plus or minus 6. 6. What's the square root of 100? 10. 10. Not plus or minus 10. 10. So the square root of 25 is 5. So here's an equation. Is it true? No. It isn't true. This is false. So what's the conclusion about this candidate? Not a solution. But I'd like to point out that this equation, this equation, even though it's not true, what would happen if you squared both sides? It would be true. Ah, that's why, that's why you are, it, you know, you might look at it as you were momentarily led to believe that negative five could be a solution. It's in the end because of this, because of what we did right here. Let's check the other one. So 15 minus 2 times 3 equal to 3. Well, 2 times 3 is 6. 15 minus 6 is 9. So the left-hand side is square root 9. What's the square root of 9? 3. So how about this equation? It's true. So now we can write a conclusion. So what's the conclusion? X is equal to 3 is the only one. Okay. Good. Any question about this? Did we get to X equals 3 by squaring, which we're not supposed to do? We did. So w what we did, square. it's not that we're not supposed to square. It's not that. It's that when you square both sides, when you square both sides, that makes it necessary to make these checks in the end. Okay. So if we had solved an equation, and the only thing that we did was add things to both sides, or multiply both sides by a non-zero number, if those are the only kinds of operations that we did, it is not necessary to check. It's just not necessary, because all of those operations preserve the truth. So this we had to do so that we could get we could free x from the radical. We had to do it. But it is, in a sense, not completely legitimate, which means that everything that you get as a result of that has to be verified. Good. Other questions? <clears throat> OK. So a more complicated one. Um, square root 2x plus 3 uh, plus square root x minus 2 equal to 4. Okay, so now this one's more complicated because there's more radicals. But the first step is always the same. You need to consider the natural domain. So now we need two things to be true. What things do we need to be true? We need this argument to be good. We need that argument to be good. They both must be good. So like we could plug in 10, because 10 would work for that one, because that'd be 23, and 10 would work for that one, that'd be 8. Could we plug in 1? 1 would work for that one, because 2 times 1 plus 3 is 5. Could we, could we use 1 for that one? No. Uh, we couldn't. So does everyone see that, OK, we've got to satisfy both. So what's necessary is that we need 2x plus 3 to be non-negative, and we need x minus 2 
to be non-negative. We need them both to be non-negative. So solving the first one. They can be equal to zero? Yes, this, because what's the square root of zero? Zero. zero. So it's fine to plug in zero. Uh, so this one is negative three, and then this one is x greater or equal to two. So for this one, what do we need to do? Divide by two, right? Because I moved this three to the other side. And then this would be x is greater or equal to negative 1.5. And this one is x is greater or equal to 2. So let's think about these for a moment. Is there a way that we could simplify this statement? Right. This one alone is enough, right? Because if x is greater than or equal to 2, Yeah, then it's surely greater than or equal to negative <coughs> 1.5. Okay? So this one alone is enough. <clears throat> because if you like to put sort of human language into this one, this one is, the, this one is a stronger condition. This, when this one is true, that one is also true. Okay, so that means that when we get near the end of the exercise, we'll have a candidate list of solutions. You know, maybe, you know, maybe the solutions will be, um, you know, negative 10, 4, and 12, or something like that. What would we, what would we say about negative 10? It's out. It's not part of the natural domain, cannot possibly par be part of the solution. Okay, so now that we've done that, considered that, now we're going to perform our operations. So generally speaking, now there's multiple radicals. What did we do? What did we do last time? We squared both sides. However, conveniently last time, conveniently last time, we were in a situation where this radical was all by itself. It was all by itself. Now, in this equation, neither one of these radicals is all by itself, right? because they're, they're being added together. So before we do anything, we need to pick one of these radicals and, and get it all by itself. So get, get one of them all by itself, and then square both sides. So the strategy is we're going to pick the most the most complicated one we're going to isolate it isolate on one side and then we're going to square okay so then there's two choices. I claim this, is, this one is slightly more complicated because it has a, it's not monic. The argument's not monic. But in the end, it actually doesn't matter. You, you will be able to solve this question either way. Okay. So here we go. I'll say, here's my choice. So 2x plus 3, I have it all by itself because I'm going to move the, thing, the other one to the other side. So moving the other one to the other side looks like this. Now what? Square. Now square. So, we squared both sides. It was necessary to do so. But I'm going to remind myself, self, you need to look at this. 
when you come back, when you come back to it. Okay, so what's going to be the new left-hand side? Very good. And how about the new right-hand side? Less confident. <laughs> That's almost right, but not right. So, so what, what you said was equivalent to saying, I'm going to square this one and square that one and subtract them. So is that the way that you square a binomial? Mm. It isn't, right? So remember, oh. yes. Okay. So when you're going to do a minus b and you're going to square it, remember that this is, there's a formula for this, but in the end it's FOIL, mm. right? So it's that one times that one. So a squared, and then that one times that one, so minus ab, and then that one times that one, so minus another ab, and then that one times that one, so plus b squared. So the formula is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Okay? When you want to square a binomial. So the square doesn't, doesn't distribute across subtraction. It doesn't do that. So this would be 4 squared minus 2 times 4 times the square root of x minus 2. So that's a squared minus 2ab and then plus b squared. Okay, so the left-hand side is unchanged. I'll simplify the right-hand side as much as I can. So this would be 16 minus 8, and then square root x minus 2. And then what square root x minus 2 squared? x minus 2. Okay, now we have a new equation. What? So what's your comment? The 2 and the 4 in the middle, where did the 2 come from? 2 times AB? This formula. <coughs> but like which one's AB? The 4 is A. <coughs> okay. The radical is B. Okay. So 2 A B. So the whole radical is B. Right. Okay. okay, so notably, how about this equation? How many radicals does this equation have? Just one. So that's nice, a little bit, because how many radicals did we start with? Two. Okay. So then what? Yeah, now we isolate the most complicated radical, which is the only one, right? So now we isolate this one, and then we square both sides. It's going to be as exactly as, it, as exciting as it sounds. So, so 2x plus 3 is 14 and then minus 8 square root x minus 2 and then plus x. So I want to get this one by itself. So I'll subtract 14. So 2x minus 11 is negative 8 x minus 2 and then plus x. And what else do I need to do? Subtract x, so that would be x minus 11, because 2x minus 1x is just 1x, is negative 8 square root x minus 2. Okay, now, if you really wanted to be, take the instructions completely literal, I suppose now you could divide both sides by negative 8. There'd be nothing wrong with that. But this is isolated enough. A, 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 a constant multiple multi multiplied by it is isolated enough. If this was addition, then we, need to, we would need to get that negative 8 on the other side. But because this is multiplication, this is <coughs> isolated enough. Okay, so now, I guess I'll start a new page. 
So now that we have it isolated, what are we going to do? Square both sides. So x minus 11, square that, is negative 8, square root x minus 2, square all that. So what's the left-hand side? Very good, x squared minus 22x plus 121. The right-hand side, I'll do it in steps. So now, because, because this is a product, because this is a product and not a sum, the square does distribute to the factors in this way. So that would be negative 8 squared multiplied by square root x minus 2 squared. So it, it does work that way when it's a product. OK, the left-hand side is unchanged. Negative 8 squared is 64. And then that radical goes away to x minus 2. And now I'd like to point out, so first off, when we squared both sides, we don't, it's not really necessary to do it again because we've already noted that something went wrong, that we did something questionable. But I'll just note again that we did yet another thing that was questionable. Uh, this equation is better than what we began with, in a sense. Why? No radicals. No more radicals. OK. So now, now it's just a matter of collecting. So x squared minus 22x plus 121 is 64x minus 128. I'll get everything on the same side. So that'd be x squared and then minus. So 22 minus 64 is negative 86. Add 128, so plus 249 equal to 0. And then, surprise, surprise, we've ended up with a quadratic. OK. So we could use the quadratic formula. There'd be no, no problem with that. Uh, but can you, it is monic after all. And this question had so much algebra involved in it, I doubt seriously as a math instructor that the author of the question would want you to go on to use the quadratic formula and just add insult to injury. Okay. So probably this factors. 83 and 3. Okay. So 249 is, is divisible by 3. How can you tell that 249 is divisible by 3? Right. You add up all of the digits, and then you check if, if, if that sum is divisible by 3, then the original number, number is 2. 2 plus 4 is 6, plus 9 is 15. Is 15 divisible by 3? <coughs> Therefore, 249 is also divisible by 3. And 3 times 83 is 249. So this factors as x minus 3 multiplied by x minus 83. So the solutions to this equation, this last equation that we have written, are 3 and 83. So is that the answer to this question? Possibly not, right? Maybe, th maybe 3 solves the original equation, and maybe not. Maybe 83 solves the original equation, and maybe not. So why, why do we have this uncertainty? Because we, it's not the natural domain. It's because of this, these two operations. If we had done, if, if all of these operations from the beginning to the end had been truth-preserving, it would not be ne necessary to check. It, it, would be a, it would be a fact, because okay? there's no way you could have modified the truth. But getting from the beginning to the end, we did two things that could have modified the truth. So it is necessary to check. So now we'll check.
the first thing to check is the natural domain. So the natural domain was x greater or equal to 2. So how about these? They're both okay. What's the next thing you need to check? The original equation. Okay, so the original equation, we plug that in. I'll do the first one, so I'll do x is 3. Uh, so that'd be 2 times 3 uh, plus 3. 2 times 3. <coughs> plus 3, and then plus square root 3 minus 2 equal to 4. Okay, so 2 times 3 is 6 plus 3 is 9, the square root of which is what? What's the square root of 9? 3. three. Okay, then plus 3 minus 2 is 1, the square root of 1 is 1. So how about this? Is this true? Yeah. It's true. That means that we suspected that 3 would be a solution, and it is. Let's check x is 83. So 2 times 83 plus 3, and then plus the square root of 83 minus 2 equal to 4. Well, 2 times 83, that's 166, plus 3 is 169. What's the square root of 169? 83. 83 minus 2 is 81. What's the square root of 81? 9. How about that? No. Not true. So that's false. So what's the conclusion? Good. So the bookkeeping is a little, <coughs> little tedious, right? You got, on the one hand, you've got, you're tracking lots of things. You're tracking the domain, okay? You're performing a sequence op of operations and you have to consider, okay, well, was that truth preserving? Okay, and the answer is, you know, maybe, depending on, <laughs> depending on the situation. Okay, so any question about this one? Okay, so now, now we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to make it more complicated. Isn't that exciting? Because now what we're going to do is instead of solving equations, instead of solving equations, we're going to solve inequalities. And the reason why that's a little bit more complicated is because the rules concerning what is truth preserving for an inequality are slightly more complicated. So the truth preservation rules for inequalities are more complicated than the truth preservation rules for equations. So the resulting pr process and procedure is, requires even more book bookkeeping. So these are the truth preserving operations on inequalities. So, the first one is the same as it, as it is for equations. You can add or subtract the same real to both sides. And that will always preserve the truth value of the inequality. So if it was true to begin with, it will be true in the end. If it was false to begin with, it will be false in the end. What was the next truth preserving operation for equations? Right. So you can multiply or divide the same blank real to 
both sides. So that's how I wrote it when I was talking about equations. And what adjective did I put in there? Non-zero. Non Can't put this adjective there now. Now, now the adjective is positive. So if you have an inequality, you can multiply the inequality, both sides, by a positive number, and the truth will be preserved. Okay? And here is the rule, the new rule. You can multiply or divide the same negative same negative real to both sides so so far what I've written if I was to just put a period then it would be the same as equations because we could just combine these together right and, it, and the rule would be the same but now I have to write the part that most students <coughs> overlook you can multiply or divide the same negative number to both sides and reverse the direction of the inequality. Okay, so now let's have an example of this so that you can understand what I mean. So how about this inequality? Three less than five. Is that true? Yes? Supposing I multiply both sides by 2. What's the new left-hand side? What's the new right-hand side? Is it still true? It is still true. Okay, it would, it would work just as well if I say I'm going to take this one and divide by 2. Okay, so now let's take this one. Same one. And let's multiply by negative 4. Well, what is the new left hand side? Negative 12. And what is the new right hand side? Negative 20. And of these two, negative 12 is the greater, it's further to the right on the number line. I would, rather, I would rather owe you $12 than owe you $20. So do you observe that the direction of the inequality reversed? Okay. So you can multiply both sides of an inequality by a non-zero number. But when that number is negative, you must switch the direction of the inequality. That, that property is hidden in equations because equations don't have a direction, right? They, they're not pointing in a certain direction. If A is equal to B, then B is equal to A. <coughs> but if A is less than B, it is not true that B is less than A. Only one of those things can be true. So they have the inequality has a direction. Okay. <coughs> and the fourth one is that when you have this case, when uh, 0 is less than A is less than B, that is to say, you have two numbers, they're, and they're both positive, and A is less than B, then you can reciprocate A and B. So what, is, what does that mean, reciprocate? Reverse. It means multiplicative inverse, right? So that means the reciprocal of A is what? One, one over A. One over A. So this would be one over A, and this would be one over B. When you reciprocate, you also reverse the direction. So, for example, <coughs> for example, three is less than five. That's true. Now let's, now let's consider one-third and one-fifth. Which one of those is bigger? 
one third is bigger. Okay, so any question about this? So you can see the rules, the truth preserving rules are a little more complicated for, for inequalities. So we're going to have to work carefully and diligently to not, to not violate them. And when, when we do violate them, to carefully keep track and go back and check and everything else. So, for example, uh, let's do an, uh, a relatively easy one. 3x minus 5 less than uh, 10. So how do we do it? What do we do? Add 5. So is that truth preserving? Yes. Yes. <coughs> now what? Divide by 3. Is that truth preserving? Yes. Yes. So that's the answer. Okay, now a separate example. Now I'll do something like 4 minus uh, 8x is less than, uh, I don't know, 20. <clears throat> so now one thing that I could do is I could move the 8x to the other side. Okay, but I'm going to leave the, 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 the negative 8x where it is. I'm going to leave it there. And instead, I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides so that it's negative 8x is less than 16. Okay. So now, if this was an equation, what would we do? Divide by negative 8, and that's what we're going to do. So what's the new left-hand side? X, and the new right-hand side is negative 2. But what notable thing has occurred? Yes, we've reversed the direction of the inequality. OK. <clears throat> Any question about this? So you might say to yourself, self, I'm going to just avoid, I'm going to avoid the, that, that having to divide by negative numbers because I could have avoided it by just moving this 8x to the other side. Then it would be, then it would be positive 8x on that side, right? So now I'm going to give you a problem where you can't avoid it. Well, it, in principle it still could be avoided, but um, it's just far more, far more work is required to avoid it than, what's wor than what it's worth. So now this is an inequality string. So this means that two separate inequalities need to be true at the same time. That needs to be true. And that one needs to be true also. Okay. So if this was the inequality that we were dealing with, just this one, then what would we do? We'd subtract 2. If this was the inequality that we were dealing with, what would we do? We'd subtract 2. So that's what we're going to do, except now we have to subtract it not just from both sides, but rather from all positions. So we're going to subtract 2 from the left position, subtract 2 from the middle position, and subtract 2 from the right position. So when you do that, what's the new left position? 3. What's the new middle position? Negative 4x. Negative 4x. And what's the new right position? 11. <coughs> okay. So now, if it was just this inequality, what would we do? Divide by negative 4. And if it was just this inequality, what <coughs> would we do? Divide by negative 4. So that's what we're going to do, except we must do it to all positions. What's the new left-hand side? Good. What's the new middle? X. Just x. And what's the new right-hand side? And what notable thing has occurred? We flipped the direction. Very good. So now we're going to talk about something on 
Friday, but I want to I want to foreshadow. I want to foreshadow something. So here's here's an equation, an sorry, an inequality. So about one over x minus four is less than five. So there's a nice inequality. If this was an equation, what would you do? Multiply both sides by x minus 4. That's what you would do if this was an equation. So now I have a question for you. So this, this, is, what you're, this is what you're recommending I do. Is this legitimate? When, when can you multiply both sides of an inequality by a number? When uh, it's positive. Okay, is x minus 4 positive or is it negative? It depends on the Depends on x. Depends on x. If x is 10, it was positive. If x is 1, that was negative. And if it was negative, we would have need to switch the direction of the inequality. So this, this sequence of operations right here is incorrect and, and cannot be made correct without significant modification. And we're going to talk about that on Friday. Have a nice Wednesday.